Our last addition of Fred Bricksburg was the small classic chapel. Today I want to begin building this iconic triplet of buildings, so let's start with the hat store in the middle. First we'll start with the sidewalk out front, and then move on to the interior flooring. For this building I went with a more complex tiling pattern with tan 2x2s and 1x2s, and then dark green 1x1s on the diagonal. Next we'll move on to the most important wall in a hat store, the wall of hats. I protruded 10 shelves and placed these little hat holders on each one. To help blend in those plates, I went ahead and made a large smooth area on the back of the wall. It also adds some variety to the wall, and I think it looks like it's been weathered a bit. Placing the wall down, now we just need some hats. Originally I wanted to use just these cowboy hats, but it turns out they aren't too prevalent. So I had to get some other ones like this Outback style hat. I prefer the cowboy hat, but this one looks alright too. I got those in a few different colors, and also a couple of the older style cowboy hats in brown. All in all, I actually like the variety of hats, as it gives the customers some more choices, which I guess is what you'd expect to have in a hat store anyway. Next we'll add the back wall, which is pretty simple. Using that dark green color scheme from the floor, I got some matching windows and a door frame. I was really surprised that LEGO doesn't make a simple 1x1 round plate in dark green, so if you want to do this, you'll have to use a go brick for that piece. Next we'll add a couple of simple benches for the customers to sit on. In between those, I want to make a nice mirror stand so the customers can check out their hats before buying them. There weren't any mirror pieces on brown tiles, so I bought a couple of these sticker sheets from a Chima set that has a perfect reflective sticker even with a cobweb in the corner. Attaching that tile to a floor bracket, I can implement a unique building technique with this chainsaw piece in dark gray. I'm not sure if this is an approved LEGO technique or not, but it doesn't stress any parts and it's secure, so it's good for me. And then to help hide that protruding bar up top, we can add another hat on display. This is an older style one in light gray. I actually meant to rotate that mirror stand 90 degrees, but I think it turned out pretty great. I went ahead and picked up this disco cowboy minifig from the video series, and he looks ecstatic to find a new hat in the perfect color for his get up. For the other side, I made a simple counter with a swinging door to prevent customers from venturing behind it. And then I added an old timey cash register in sand green with some pearl gold accents. For the shopkeeper, I thought this guy from the second Lego movie was perfect. He has a specially printed hat and is wearing some chaps. I think his name is Rex, but I'm not sure because I never saw the second movie. Actually, I think I only saw the last half of the first one, but it looks like he approves of the Disco Cowboys color choice. On the left wall, I thought this store could also sell some blue jeans. I have these just hanging from a plate, and as you can see, you have your choice between dark blue and regular. I added a clock and repeated that smooth area on the wall from the other side. We can also add this sheriff guy who's looking for a new pair of jeans. Now we can move on to the front wall. We'll add another door frame in dark green with a clear door this time so customers can see in, and of course another illegal dark green stud for the handle. We'll also add some nice storefront windows with dark green trim. Next we have the overhang. In real life it's a thicker one, which is good because I'll need to utilize that interior space for what I have planned. This just connects on top of the front wall. And then I made this big boot to attach on the overhang, just like the real shop has. I like how that turned out a lot. The next part of the wall uses crowbar pieces to act as the wires holding up the overhang. It uses these clip pieces. It uses these clip pieces and you just shove the crowbar up underneath them. It's kind of a tight fit, so I'm not sure if it's an approved technique, but it's worth it because that detail turned out great. And then here's the simplest roof ever made. It's just a 16 by 16 plate with some tiles around the edge. Wow, that was too easy. I need to design more of my buildings with those dimensions. But there's one thing missing. We need a giant hat to go alongside that boot out front. And that's where this Duplo cowboy comes in. His white hat will be perfect for the overhang. The question is, how do we get it off? With the newer Duplo figures, you can punch out the hip axle. However, this older style figure doesn't have an axle running all the way through it. I tried to bend back the torso to pry out the legs, but I wasn't having any luck, and eventually I resorted to some more destructive means. I broke off the torso's corner with some needle nose pliers and was able to remove the legs. It turns out these hips have a non-removable pin in each side instead of a through axle. So I'm not sure there's a good way to disassemble these figures without breaking them. Next I yanked out the core that held the arms in place. Then I could pinch the end of the hat to remove it from the body and slide the head off. I didn't really want to break the figure, but I bought it specifically for this hat, so it's all good. I got what I wanted. I had a hard time connecting the hat to the overhang and ended up using some Lego rubber bands that I had from a hidden side set. I girth hitched the two rubber bands together and around the barb at the end of the hat. 
Then I wound those around some cylinder bricks and added a tile on top for support. I know, a super common, totally legit technique that you see in pretty much every LEGO set. But hey, it does seem to work pretty well and keeps that hat in place, which is all I wanted. I actually ended up raising the hat and connection system up one plate so that it was centered better on the overhang. And then we can just reattach it to the shop and we have ourselves a hat store. I'm super happy with how it turned out and the front looks just like the source material. There's also a good selection inside to keep all the customers happy. I'd be interested to hear what you think about it and definitely stay tuned as we continue to grow the historic district of Fredericksburg. See you next time.